Hello students, just listen to these lines. If I had a flower every time, I would always remember you. I would forever wander in the garden. Few more lines. It's better to have loved and lost than to have never loved. So how beautiful and meaningful these lines are. These are lines of Alfred Tennyson. He was called as Alfred Lord Tennyson. So what is this Lord we will be discussing later. So now if you want to know something about Alfred Lord Tennyson, you must go to 19th century English literature. The whole of 19th century English literature was divided into two periods. The first half of the 19th century was called as the Romantic Revival, which was born after the uh, stern classical age of Alexander Pope, Dryden and others. So this kind of a romantic revival was uh, almost in the area of nature, in excavating the beauty of nature and making man go back to nature from the uh, torments of the industrial revolution. And we have the uh, foremost poets like Wordsworth, Coleridge, uh, Shelley, Keats, uh, Byron. And then the second half of the uh, 19th century belongs to the Victorian age with the coming of Queen Victoria as the Queen of England. You have a different set of poets like uh, uh, Tennyson, Browning, uh, Lady Browning, Matthew Arnold. They also carry uh, the uh, nature and uh, the uh, labor and the individual appeals of the romantic spirit into them. But they have in their poems a, a, poems a kind of a realistic touch because they, were, they had almost fallen into uh, the, the, the peak of the industrial revolution and the birth of the capitalistic movement that is uh, there uh, when it comes to the features of the Victorian age. So Alfred Tennyson was the major poet of this uh, age. Now what we have to uh, see here is, uh, during the Romantic Revival, uh, Wordsworth was the poet laureate of England and with the coming of a Victorian uh, period, we have Tennyson as the poet laureate of England. So how is it that he contributed to, to the Victorian literature is a little bit of study today. Apart from that, we are here to discuss his poem, Lady Clare. Now going back to uh, Tennyson's life, he was born in a well-to-do family, no doubt his father was a rector in a church and he had a good earning but then uh, his parents had 12 children. So Tennyson was the fourth child and the family had to look after 12 children, it was not that easy in those days because they had to give education for children. So uh, initially as a boy uh, Tennyson was given some grammar education which he was not very happy with and uh, in the coming days he could not go for college or he could not get a degree because of the financial conditions at home. So at the age of 8 he dreamt of having uh, writing as his career and he started writing poems uh, with the help of the romantic spirit that was there uh, with the uh, previous writers like Wordsworth and Coleridge. And then uh, as a little bit of financial conditions improved, uh, his elder brothers uh, ha having helped him, he could go to Trinity College and then continued with his university degree. It is there uh, where he met Arthur Hallam and that was a kind of a turning point in his life. Uh, we should say that they were bosom friends, deep friends, very faithful to each other. And uh, it is he who inspired most of his uh, uh, poems that came uh, later on. But then, though he was writing so many beautiful poems, he was not on the forefront. But with the uh, coming of his two big poems, Ulysses and In Memoriam, uh, he was uh, taken to the court and Queen uh, Victoria gave him uh, a kind of a rank called Lord. Initially, he did not accept it, but later on uh, in his adulthood, he accepted this. Uh, Lord. So what is this Lord kind of a rank? If you look at the British monarchy, uh, a Lord is one uh, who is the heir of a king. and uh, But he, he, he is heir but he cannot come to the position of a king. He, might, uh, he is the youngest of the king's sons so he will always be called as Lord. This is one thing and there is also kind of a peerage, uh, the, the kind of a ranking next to the king. 
you have some four to five rankings like the duke the earl the viscount and then um, you have uh, the masters so there are so many um, ranks below the king so one of those ranks was also uh, counted as lord so this kind of a uh, title was given by queen uh, victoria after his uh, be after honoring him for his in memoriam which she personally liked and which uh, she made him uh, read for her many times and uh, they had also become friends at some stage of life they, i think they met twice in their life and that had turned into a deep kind of a friendship that is something different so um today we have picked up uh, tennyson's poem uh, lady clare before going to that we should know what made in memoriam become such a popular uh, poem of those days and to the extent that uh, tennyson along with matthew bernard and browning uh, you know they were uh, also great poets uh, but then he was awarded with poet laureate so it, it in in memoriam is a kind of elegy written to his friend arthur hallam uh, who died suddenly of a stroke and that was a big blow to tennyson's life spiritual and also family life because arthur hallam uh, was to be engaged with uh, tennyson's sister but then that was all a shock to the family and he, he took a quite a long time to overcome this tragedy and this poem is dedicated to him it's almost a kind of a, a, a mourning kind of a poem but then the intricacies of the poem are something different you know on the surface level it's there arthur hallam is there as a character in that but then now you have the traditional religious issues and then you have the concept of imm immorality in it and also uh, tennyson uh, picks up uh, darwin's evolution of species a little bit and then he also has some uh, uh, reference to modern geology so this is a kind of a traditional religious uh, elegy kind of a thing which was strangely mixed up uh, which literally fantasized uh, queen elizabeth who uh, uh, queen victoria who was very well read in those days so this is how it brought him immense popularity and his financial conditions improved he got married to his lady love and then he had a happy life uh, this is all about tennyson now our thing uh, of interest today is lady clare so we will briefly analyze the poem this is there for rcu become second semester lady clare uh, is was not simply a, a theme picked up by tennyson's imagination but it was a, a, a novel uh, inheritance was published in those days uh by some uh, novelist female novelist of those days so this theme was picked from that novel it was not such a popular novel but this theme was picked from the novel uh, inheritance so the story goes like this it was spring season i'm i started analyzing the poem it was a spring season and everywhere the lilies had blown beautifully and the clouds had collected so now when we come to the concept called spring see why did uh, tennyson begin the poem with the season spring because you take the mythology uh, uh, of all the countries uh, uh, or the, uh, the the epic uh, writings of all the countries you have this reference of spring somewhere in uh, in their um, theme thematic appeal because spring uh, speaks is a symbol of rebirth rejuvenation uh, rejoicing reproduction and so many things so this is a season that falls between winter and summer it's a kind of a transition from dryness again to life so he picks uh, this uh, the season of spring in the beginning of the poem and there we see uh, lilies everywhere so what does lilies uh, symbolize lilies symbolize purity and the lilies also symbolize uh, extreme beauty so now it is spring season we can see lilies uh, growing everywhere and the clouds are gathering and the, uh, the, the there is a kind of an expectation of a, a little bit of shower at that time we see lord uh, ronald uh, coming to us uh, lady clare so lord ronald and lady clare were childhood friends they were betrothed to each other they were in deep love and and this was the day that he wanted to uh, propose her and ask her hand in marriage so he was carrying a white doe what is a doe d o e doe is a female rabbit so he was carrying a small beautiful doe in his hands to present his lady love see on one hand we have a uh, lord ronald as uh aristocrat and on the other hand we have lady clare who is also a uh, rich 
uh, heiress to her father's property and uh, still he is carrying a dough in his hand not a jewel or anything so this indicates the purity of their love which is very much down to earth and it is as beautiful uh, as the gods and goddesses themselves carries and he meets lady claire and he gives her the dough and tells that uh, tomorrow i am going to wed you and be ready it's high time we need to get married so giving this beautiful uh, message to her the, the, the lady claire is jumping and enjoying in happiness and after he returns there is someone watching this incident at home she is a nurse an old nurse called alice uh, she comes to lady claire and asks her who was it that just returned from the home she tells it is uh, uh, my would be a husband we are getting married tomorrow he is the lord and i am the lady so what a match we have so tomorrow we are getting married then lady uh, uh, the nurse alice uh, is shocked with this news uh, she says stop this could be a kind of a wrong decision in your future tomorrow so uh, so she is also shocked so explain why so there is a secret behind you dear lady claire i must reveal it to you today before you enter into your new life and that would worry are you if it comes to your door some other day so now what is that secret so lady claire is the daughter of earl uh, and uh, she was the only issue to him so all his property belonged to her so in case she married uh, lord ronald all her property would also go to him so he would own her and they were equal in status so this is how the, there was a kind of a nice match an acceptable match between them but then it was not so she ali tells uh, lady claire that uh, one day when i was uh, uh, taking care of earl's daughter she died at my breast as a child i uh, buried her myself and since you were of the same color and you were of the same age i placed you into his arms as his daughter and he could never recognize and from that day till today nobody knows the secret other than me and uh, you are not the heir to the earl you you were born poor to me she cries she says mother i don't feel bad that i was born to a poor woman but then all these days i've been cheating my father i've been cheating my lover who thinks i'm born and brought up in a, a big class i i belong to the aristocratic class so what do i answer him now she says and alice uh, uh, brings her to control she says calm calm down daughter this is not the way this secret should be between you and me because you are i am your mother and you are my child and i know your tongue will be only up to me and my tongue will be up to you we need to hide the secret from the world i want you to have a happy life but then the guilt that was in in me i wanted to share with you before you could go to some other's house but then the lady claire says no how could you do this how could you as a mother tell me preach me this this moment i will go to lord ronald and tell him that i am no more lady claire and i'm going to reveal this secret to him what may be the future i do not know but this is the kind of true love that i have for him and immediately she pulls her jewel necklace throws it off and pulls off all her ornaments throws them and she dresses her herself like a poor farmer's girl and then uh, she has just a rose in her hair uh, she looks like someone coming from a village she has a rustic appeal now from lady she has become a rustic girl and in that dress that evening she rushes to uh, her lover's home and she tells him uh, even when she standing waiting for him at his door so he comes and she he looks and what is this you have done of yourself that this doesn't suit you i don't want to see you in this rustic uh, attire please go and change what is this you are wearing a rose why don't you have jewels to adorn yourself with and uh, she says uh, hold your ears and uh, hold your heart i'm going to reveal something to you today he says open up yourself i'm yours and i shall listen to you and then she tells that she uh, didn't know that she belonged to a poor woman and uh, today uh, this is the secret that has been opened to her by her mother and she is not at all angry with her mother because while coming uh, she had kissed her mother with love and the mother had also embraced her 
so she doesn't have any kind of a regret for what her mother has done because she did for a good cause she has given so much love and affection in earl's life by giving me to him so i don't have any problem with me but the problem lies now with the marriage because i do not belong to your class anymore and all the property that belongs belongs to me no more because a after the death of the earl's daughter you were the next heir to the uh, earl's uh, uh, wealth so in, after the death the naturally uh, the wealth has already belonged to you i don't own even a single penny of it now i'm a poor girl so now it's left to you as to how you would look at me and uh, he doesn't even take a second the lord smiles and scorns so what uh, and tells her i don't know whether you belong to a, a class or you belong to a, you don't belong to any class i just know that i'm truly in love with you and i just know that i i have loved claire whether she is lady or not is not my concern and he scorns because he never expected that uh, uh, lady claire would uh, suspect uh, his appeal to her his love towards her so there's a kind of a mixed gesture that he gives to lady claire and he says uh, we still are engaged to each other and tomorrow i'm still getting married to you and after the marriage you will still be a lady claire so what's the problem in it please return home and happily come well dressed tomorrow for the wedding because you have always been lady claire in my eyes so this is how the beautiful poem uh, ends uh, with the note that uh, love should be above all uh, social and economic concerns and this kind of true love uh, was there in the uh, period of shakespeare or was there in the period of romantic uh, revival with wordsworth shelley keats but then when it came to tennyson it was a, a kind of a difficult uh, situation for him to present this because it was a realistic revolution of those days with the uh, challenging conditions of women in workplaces and in uh, inside the families it was very difficult for him to present these things but it was a great success and uh, because of the moral message that he had because in almost all the tennyson's poem we see that there is a kind of a pessimistic ending overtaken by the will power and that is what it happens in all his poems so children i hope you enjoyed this uh, analysis short analysis of the poem lady claire uh, next we will come up with in memoriam till then goodbye take care thank you